Okay. Why, ladies and gentlemen, boys and uh, welcome to uh, Girls, our episode something of the Spear and Sunnies podcast. Going to start it right off the bat with an apology about last week's episode. I inserted, I, I uploaded it and YouTube has this feature going, oh, we'll, we'll insert the correct amount of ads in your video. And I was like, all right, sweet. I don't have to put them in fucking manually every... However often I usually do it, 20 minutes or so is what I normally do, 15, 20 minutes. And then I just upload it, didn't think about it, and then I got all these comments going, oh, what's with all the ads? This podcast is fucking sponsored to hell. What's with all the ads, blah, blah. And I look at it and I was like, oh, fuck, I didn't really have a sponsored ad read. Uh, And then I noticed that YouTube put 18 fucking ads in it like every four minutes. So sorry about that. Uh, I hope uh, hope you didn't get any here in my garage shit, but uh, I am am back to it uh speaking of ads uh alpha energy merch goes on sale this week make sure you're on losespears.com on the mailing list check my instagram more info to come we've got this design i have another higher quality uh fancy metal band t-shirt that'll be coming out as well uh we're doing a whole photo shoot tomorrow for that and that'll be up uh in a couple of days so uh alpha energy losespears.com get you some We'll be doing a limited pre-order for those. It'll be open for two weeks. And if you get one, you get one. If you don't get it in those two weeks, you're a fucking idiot and you're missing out. So that's on you. It's it's uh, it's up to you if you want a good. If you want the coolest fucking merch in the game, you want some alpha energy on your chest. Then either give me a call or buy a (laughs) t-shirt. Loosebeers.com. Um. I've uh, been having a, a fairly normal week this week. Uh, went out and did shit. Got a haircut. Uh, he, he, look, he did his best, you know. it's it, does, it doesn't look great. It's still very blue. But uh, the the haircut is great. The color is not. And he can't do anything about that. So I literally walked in and I was like, just do your best. And he tried his best. And you know what? It's it's not too bad. It's a little bit fuckboy-y. But uh, it's not too bad. I'm, I'm, I'm used to it now. I'm vibing with it. It is what it is. My comment section, I, I've realized that um, the blue hair has completely fucked the type of content that I do. You guys know what I do. I do this. I yell and I say and I say obscene things and opinions. My TikTok just can't, none of my TikToks can go well because of my hair. You know, I'll put up a bunch of jokes that before would have gone great. But now instead of going, oh, funny joke or people arguing with each other about what I said or cunts going, oh, I love that, but please don't say that word. Instead, it's just, it's just comments about my blue hair. That's, that's it. That's all I'm getting is comments about the hair and nothing else. So that's, that's really good. You know, I feel like, um, I feel like those Instagram models that they hit 30 and they start, you know, they start getting a little bit less hot, you know, like, like mid, th- you know, when an Instagram model hits mid thirties, they were, the, they were the hottest bitch out and then they're not ugly anymore, but they're kind of hitting the wall. They're, they're getting diminishing returns on their beauty. They know that the decline is coming and they have to diversify. So it, what they do is instead of just, you know, having a graceful retirement, like an athlete, and just moving on to something else is they try and pretend like everyone there really reckons they're funny, you know? Like they're like, oh, you know, everyone w- previously was here for my tits, but maybe I could let them know how funny I am. And I'm sorry if you're hot, it, it's very, very likely that you are not funny. The only time hot people are funny is when they were ugly as kids. The only time, you know? Like, if, like, a, like a chick who used to be really fat, or a dude that uh, was was incredibly skinny, and then he went and started hitting the gym and dressing right. That guy's funny. That girl's funny because they had to earn people's attention. You know, if you're not hot, and I I, I know from personal experience, if you're not a really hot person, you got to earn p- attention from people. You got to earn that shit. I I have nothing but my words. You know. I mean, when I get my new chin, it's fucking over for you. I'll be funny and hot. Say goodbye to your girlfriend. Your mum, never seeing it again. When I get my chin installed, it's over. But until then, I got to earn your attention, you know? And especially with the blue hair, it's even harder. 
That's what that's what it, that's what it really is. With my blue hair, it is even harder. I've, I've realized that I have to be even funnier because cunts look at me and go, oh, that guy's like not hot and he has blue hair. He better be hilarious. <laughs> that man better be fucking funny. Like Ninja, he's not the best looking guy in the world. He's got crazy hair, but fuck, he can play. You know, like that gun can play. If Ninja was hot, there would be no Ninja. You reckon Drake would be playing with him? No, Ninja would be fucking, you know, working a regular job and fucking tens at the club. He wouldn't be playing Fortnite. You need to be a little bit ugly to fucking succeed. Unless you're a model, you know. To really succeed in this in this entertainment and having a personality, you've got to be a little bit ugly. That's why all these movie stars and models need media training. Because they're so fucking hot, they don't even know how to be interesting. It's it's so it's foreign to them. What? I mean, I have to try to entertain others? Why can't I just do that with my tits or my fucking chiseled jawline? You know? You've got to earn people's attention when you're not hot. And that's what a lot of these uh, Instagram models don't understand. They, they, live, they live 35 years of being amazing to look at and just like, fuck, look at her tits. That's what I'm here for. What an amazing face. Check out that guy's shoulders. That's what they're for. And then they hit like 35 and they're not ugly yet, but it's, it's going to happen, you know? And they've just started, they've just, they hit their peak and then they, they rode it out of their peak and then they went down like one point. They're sitting at a solid nine and then they hit like 37 and they're like, I am losing it. I need to switch something up. I need to switch it up. But the problem is they never got bullied because they were hot. So they don't know how to be interesting or funny. Why be funny if I was hot? You know, that's why I'm funny because I wasn't hot. Have you ever seen someone that has been hot their entire life and gone, fuck, she's funny? No, you haven't, you know? It's always the chick that had braces for way too long. She's funny, you know? Or like that that dude that 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 was like so fucking aggressively skinny. That guy's funny. And then he put on a bit of weight and it's like, man, hot and funny? How can I compete? You know? That's me. I wasn't always this tall. If I was this tall for all of high school, I probably wouldn't be funny. Because while I might not be a, that attractive, I'm not ugly, but I'm not a model, you know? But I am tall, which confuses women. It gets in their brain. You know, I stand up. They, or they All of a sudden, they go from making eye contact to looking at my chest, and it breaks, their, it breaks their brain. They go, oh, fuck, he's hot now, you know? It's the male equivalent of an ugly girl with a massive rack. It's like, I like those, but I don't know about that. I'm that for women. What am I fucking... Oh, yeah. It's so much harder now because of the blue hair. I put up a TikTok that I thought was pretty funny. I just did it today. Which I'll talk about later. Let me just read the comments on my latest one. Put up a TikTok. I thought it was pretty funny. It's not a bang. I'm saving those for the stage. The only comments. Tall ninja. I can't hear you talking over that fucking hair. Another one I thought was pretty damn funny. Blue hair. That's it. That's all. That's the top comment. Blue hair. You look like a femboy. I got to give up. It's over. (laughs) What I was talking about on TikTok... So but there's a new SpongeBob film for some reason, you know, like let fucking let Hillenberg spitting in his grave. But there's a new fucking there's a new SpongeBob film. Didn't he say, hey, don't if I when I die, just just stop. And they were like, gotcha. No worries, Steven. And then he died and they were like, all right. Movie time. Prince of money. Let's fucking go. Anyway, there's a film out and uh, and and Tiger is doing the theme song for the SpongeBob movie. Now, Tiger's great. I think he's he, he copped a lot of shit. I always liked his music. I, I found out about him like when everyone else did, Rack City. I always thought he was sick. I never thought he was garbage. He got a lot of... He's coming back now, but fucking 2016, he copped a lot of flack. 
I always thought he was sick. 10, 10, 10, 20s on your titties, bitch. Rack City, bit amazing. Rack City Bass Boosted Edition, 2012. Riding around in my mum's car. Blasting it on the way to school? Absolutely. Yes, please. Bet I just unlocked a fucking memory that some of you cunts didn't know you had. Rem remember that when you were just obsessed with like whatever the fuck the song was at the time? You just typed it into YouTube, bass boosted edition. You really thought that 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 absolutely muddying the entire track with bass was the shit. To the point where it sounded like those fucking, um, those, <laughs> those distorted memes we see of gamers screaming at their computer. You were like, yeah, this is fucking sick, you know? You just type in Skrillex, bass boosted, your fucking eyes start bleeding for some reason. You're like, this is music. Remember that shit? It's like, dude, if I, if, if I, put, if I put on headphones and I can't feel the music in my chest, it's bad music. You just be looking up Adele, hello, bass boosted edition. Hello. <laughs> Bitch sounds like Patrick. <laughs> Hello. This is Patrick. <laughs> oh, is this not, has anyone made that? Someone's gonna surely someone's done that before. That's that's definitely not an original idea. That's so funny. Sometimes you know when you think of something so hilarious that maybe you saw it. And then you think it's your idea? Patrick, hello, Adele. Surely someone's done that. What? Maybe Patrick, SpongeBob. Adele, hello. Surely someone's done that. Okay, here we go, here we go. Oh, it's only got 2,000 views. Okay, I definitely haven't seen this. Surely this has been done. Uh, okay, well that is absolutely not it. Okay, no one's no one's done this. I can't believe it. No. Can't believe it. No one's done that. That's that's a million views. Someone wants to make that on Twitter. Anyway, what am I saying? Oh yeah, Tiger is doing the new theme song for the new SpongeBob film, which is crazy to me because Tiger is like... Now, I'm not dissing Tiger because he's obviously uh, a family entertainer, and I mean that very literally, because not only is the dude making music for, like, teens and 18-year-olds, he's also making music for children with the SpongeBob theme song, and he's also making... Pornography on OnlyFans for the adults. Now, I'm not one to criticize Nickelodeon or try and snatch another man's bag, but do we think that a man who has an OnlyFans is the best decision to make a theme song for children? Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it. I'm not outraged by it. I'm just saying that if you take your 10-year-old daughter to the fucking Spongebob film, and then she loves the theme song so much she starts Googling Tiger, and then she comes back, she gives you your phone back, and you look at it, and you see that little blue lock, and it says Tiger, and then you get a charge to your credit card, and then all of a sudden you go to the bathroom and the hairbrush is missing, and you go, hey, Sarah, have you seen the hairbrush? And she starts blushing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just feel like that's not the best idea to have a porn star sing the theme song to a children's show. Like, that's that's all all I'm saying here, guys, is I don't know if, if anyone else has tried to do this. I don't know if this has ever been covered in a court of law. I don't know if, uh, if you know, celebrities have, have the best gauge of whether or not this is a good combination. But me, as a regular Australian long comedian, I just feel like children and porn doesn't mix. And I, I'm not angry about it. I'm just saying that maybe... We shouldn't be mixing porn stars with children. Is that crazy? Am I insane? You know? 
Like, should should we really have the, the fucking, the dude that's posting videos of his cock in the shower also singing about fucking Sponge, Spongebob? So when you search Tiger on Twitter, you just got, you've got this weird mishmash of Nickelodeon posting child-friendly advertisements for their new kitty film and then horny older black women posting videos of Tiger's cock in the shower. Yes, I've seen it. You know? And I'm going to be real with you guys. I've heard the song. I've seen the cock video. I prefer the cock video. It's not, it's not, I'm not saying that I like the cock vid. I'm just saying the song is that bad. I'd rather look at his cock. And I think that there's going to be a lot of children out there thinking and agreeing with me, except they love the song. They just like the fucking cock in the shower video a bit more, you know? And maybe I'm crazy. But I just feel like kids and porn don't mix. But as we know, Nickelodeon have never been the best gauge of that sort of things. Hey, Dan Snyder, huh? And that's that shit started to get mixed quite frequently, hey? <laughs> At least their logo's not a foot anymore. Maybe their logo will be switched to Tiger's cock. Who knows? Hope you guys have been having a good week. It looks like. Dude, looks like Melbourne might be going back to normal. 14 days in a row, zero coronavirus cases, and I also believe zero deaths. That's amazing. How's that hoax looking, America? Hey, what'd you guns hit? 100,000 cases in a day? Good luck. I'm not going to... Hey, I'm not saying that you're doing it wrong. I'm just saying, good luck. Huh? Oh, I, I remember all those comments... All these people go, oh, so you're pro lockdown? Hey, look, how about this? I'm not pro lockdown. I'm not pro anything. But I will say, Melbourne, zero cases, zero deaths. America, one day, 100,000. 1,000 deaths. Hey, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying the numbers. Oh, but the cases are inflated. Okay. Okay, let's say 90% of them are inflated. Ten thousand. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. I've seen so many fucking posts now of um, like dudes saying that COVID isn't real, and then three weeks later posting status updates on Facebook of them in hospital, and then a week later they die. It's fucked. Feel sorry for them. It's like, it's like one hand, it's like, ah, oh, you idiot. And on the other hand, it's like, ah, you just kind of got sucked in. Ah, oh, well. At least I can get a haircut, huh? Hopefully, you know what? Shows, are, I think, are going to be back next year. I don't know how they're going to be back. If they're socially distanced or if there's a, fuck, there's, maybe you have to wear a mask or I, I don't know what the rules are going to be, but it looks like they're going to be back. The Melbourne International Comedy Festival just opened registrations. Uh, so I'm going to register for it. I don't know what's going to be happening with it. I don't know what venue it's going to be. I don't know if it maybe it'll have to be cancelled. Um, there's a free cancellation fee, but I'm going to register for it. Um, and hopefully I'll know more in January. Basically, that's how I'm rolling the dice. Uh, so no promises, but, you know, there might be something happening in March at least in Melbourne, and then if inter then if I don't know how I'm playing it now is, I'm fairly confident that there will be shows in Melbourne, and it looks like you know if we keep having, you know what we're all got a two week average of zero cases, it looks like it's safe, because the last thing I'd want to do would be to do shows because it's legal, but even though it's not safe. Um, like, I think we canceled our shows before we legally had to, cause I was like, ah, this looks dangerous. I'm not doing public events, but it, it's looking like right now that it's safe. Um, and if it continues to do so, maybe there'll be some stand up shows in March in Melbourne, at least hopefully. Uh, and then if, and then if interstate borders are open and it looks as safe as it does in the other States, it might be a tour, um, but but there's a lot of factors with the tour because, you know, Melbourne's easy because I live here. So there's no hotels, there's no flights, there's, you know, the, the costs are way down compared to traveling. 
Because, like, I mean, fuck, if, if, if the restrictions are that you can only half fill a venue... You know, maybe like you, if you can't even make money doing that because of the amount of people that are allowed to come, it might not make sense to do inter interstate shows, or it might not even make sense to do Melbourne. I don't know. Um, it's it's all up in the air. But uh, the comedy festival and the the amount of cases we're having zero at the moment is a great sign. Uh, so hopefully uh, we'll be back to telling dick jokes. Now I I got to start like writing. I went through some of my old material that I was going to do at my show uh, early la early this year, sorry, and I looked at it and I was like, this doesn't even make sense anymore. <laughs> like uh, like I would be saying, like, hey, so I went down to the shops the other day and, and we're all hugging and not wearing masks and, and no one was dying. And it's, like it doesn't even make sense. So I think I'm going to have to bin it all and fucking come up with some other shit. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um. What else, have been, what else has been happening here? Tigers are fucking doing porn and children's entertainment. That's a good mix. Uh, too many ads in last episode. Oh, yeah, bro, I have been... Uh, I've been suffering from night terrors. Night terrors! It's been, it's been terrifying. Uh, my sleep apnea has gotten so bad that I... And I don't even know that I'm doing it. Jasmine tells me every night, every morning... The night before, apparently I I like wake up, I sit bolt upright, and I start screaming. <laughs> I start going, ah, ah, Jasmine, oh, look at that. And I start freaking out, and she goes, it's nothing, stop it, shush. And then and then in 10 seconds, I'm asleep again. I just wake up and I go, ah, hoo, ah, ah, ah. and then I just, and then I'm asleep again. And I, and I, it's, we Googled it. It's like a symptom of, of bad sleep apnea. I think what's happening is because I can't fucking breathe when I'm asleep, because apparently my mouth is too small. This is why I might be getting a new chin. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna, if you're new, it's looking like they're gonna break my jaw and move my whole chin forward to make my mouth and the opening at my throat bigger because when I'm on my back, it's all obscured and I can't fucking breathe. So I think what's happening is like I start suffocating in my sleep and then my body goes, hey, bro, you're dying, wake up. And then I get up and there's adrenaline going through my body. I'm like, oh, fuck, who's trying to kill me? It's me. I'm trying to kill me. And uh, I've been doing that every single night. So it's fucked. It's getting worse, I think. And I'm still, I, I heard back from the doctor about doing a sleep study. I went and saw a nose and throat specialist. I can't breathe. I'm like a pug. You understand me? I'm a fucking pug. I have a deviated septum, so I can't breathe through my nose. It's not blocked. It just doesn't work. It looks like a fucking S up in there. That's my nose. No hay fever. It's not blocked. It's fucked. I'm like a pug. And I can't even breathe through my fucking throat or my mouth because it's too small all right so great thanks god you fucked me up you didn't build me right i'm so long i need extra oxygen i can't fucking breathe <gasps> i'm a mouth breather you've done this to me right so i go in and the guy's like oh yeah there's no way you can breathe out of your nose you need a fucking surgery on your nose you would think for a cunt with such a big nose i'd be able to breathe through it at that is insult to injury dude and then he goes, oh, yeah, you look like you've got a recessed chin as well. I was like, oh, great. Well, call me Leafy and get me banned. Uh, and he goes, yeah, so it looks like that. That's probably almost definitely why you're having the issues. So what I'm going to have to get you to do is have a sleep study. Now, I started this process at like almost the start of the year to the point where if I got properly fucking diagnosed with this and I had the sleep study and the surgery... I would be like recovering over Christmas. <laughs> but I've been on a fucking waiting list for doing a sleep study for so long. What's the issue? Put me in a bed and watch me sleep. What? You're busy? The fucking machine does all the work. You don't have to sit there and watch me and jack off. Just fucking, you know, put some kind on a ventilator while I'm asleep. Who cares? I love that though. Like I probably sound like I've got coronavirus during the sleep study. They'll put me on a ventilator. I'll wake up and I'm, I'm Darth Vader. My chin is too small. No, you know. <laughs> 
So anyway, it's looking like then we get we finally get the call. I'm like, oh thank fuck. This is after like four months of waiting to hear back and following up. Being like, did you fucking? So what's happening now is. They tell me that because of coronavirus has delayed it because apparently people dying of a deadly virus is more important than than a than a twenty six year old guy who can't kind of can't breathe when he sleeps. Whatever, okay. Uh, apparently, I now have to wait until fucking March to get an appointment to see if they can put me on a waiting list for the sleep study. Great. So I got to wait until March to find out if I have to wait until December. Thanks, guys. Amazing work. I think I'm just going to go and do it private. Uh, and I uh, found out the cost of that yesterday, and I thought, Jesus Christ, no shoes for me. No, not even, I might have to bump myself down back to T-shirt money. That shit's expensive. Private health? Bro, I don't know how Americans deal with it. That's insane. So I might, I'll have to figure out how to pay for that. <laughs> oh, December's coming up. The ad rates are good in December. I'll be pumping out some fucking videos. Uh, let me just say that. I'll be pumping them out. But hope, but hopefully, you know, I'll be able to at least understand what's wrong with my fucking face uh, by the end of the year. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. We shall see. I'm just dreading because I want to get it done like ASAP because you need to have braces because they move your chin, your jaw, and obviously your bottom teeth is attached to that. So if they move that forward, all of a sudden your teeth don't like mesh anymore. So you need to get braces on your top row and then I, I maybe, I presume your bottom row also so that it fucking, so your mouth can close properly. And I think you need the braces before the surgery because you can't really get the surgery and then you can't close your mouth. That doesn't make sense. You need to move your teeth and then break the jaw and move that and then match it up. It's fucking hectic, right? So I want to get it done now because I can't tour. I can't do any big TV things. I can't do any amazing opportunities. I want to get it done now so I can be a brace face on YouTube and not on Netflix. You know, that'd be the worst thing. I get it done and then I, and then I score an amazing opportunity. I'm like, oh, great. I can't turn this down, so my fucking debut for the world will be some dickhead with blue hair and braces. Hey, guys, welcome to my show. Looking like I've got my fucking pronouns and ACAB in my bio. And an OnlyFans link, but it's not mine. It's my fucking girlfriend's who has a boyfriend. Fuck, dude. It's all over. It's crumbling. Nah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm happy. Spat all over my mic. I was like, oh, what's that? It's me. It, I've spat on it. <laughs> That's technically your ears. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's what's going on with me, guys. A great thing happened, though. An, an amazing thing happened that I saw that, I, that I'm actually going to get to. Oh, actually, you know what? Two amazing things have happened. I'm going to start with the best news first. Guys, ladies and gentlemen... Huge fucking news. I would like to say a big, massive, huge, giant, I'm stalling, incredibly big, large, gargantuan, gigantic, uh, titanic, gigantumongous, humongous, welcome back, pulled it up, to official sponsor of Speared Sundays, Manscaped Razors. Guys, if you wanted your nuts, women, if you wanted your pussy to be nice and trim, you need a Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0. Yes, sir. I literally use this shit all the time. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS or SPEARS20. I don't know which one of them work. They... Both do Spears or Spears 20 for 20% off and free shipping on your Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0. They also just released a nose hair trimmer and an ear trimmer as well, I believe, for all of you Italians out there. Uh, for everybody else, legit, this thing is fucking awesome. All right. I use this all the time. This is not 
a dummy copy. This is not the copy that I use to show you guys on video. I have shaved my nuts, uh, my pubes, even my armpits the other day. I tried that out. It worked great. I don't. I didn't like having shaven armpits, so I'm going to cut that out. But I'm going to keep myself trimmed down there with the Manscape 3.0. I've literally, this has nut hair in it. I'm looking at it, okay? And that's the type of experience that you're going to get when you get your own Manscaped 3.0, that you're going to pull it out at parties and go, dude, I know this has a couple of fucking labia hairs in it, but check out this godly trimmer. It's got a lot, it's got a laser scope on it. I don't know if you can see that. There's a light on it. I don't know what the fuck that's for, you know? I guess it's for people that are so fat that to get to their balls, it needs to be inserted into a fold. That's the only reason I can think that there's a light there. I don't know what it's for, for but fuck, it looks cool. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS or SPEARS20 for 20% off and free shipping. Jeez, I should probably read one of the things that they... <laughs> I, should probably, I, I, read, I, read, I pulled up the script and I didn't say anything they told me to say. What have we got here? Let's make it sound like me. Fellas... 2020 has made it hard for us to stay as hygienic as we should be. I've, I mean, yeah, I've, I've, sometimes I go days without showering. I've had to cut that out now. The boys are coming over. Luckily, our partners at Manscaped TM have made it easy to turn your bathroom into your own private dong salon. Why did they put the TM in the copy? Like, I'm, like if it's not going on screen, why does it need a trademark in it? Guys, lucky, luckily, of course I'm going to say it. I'm going to Ron Burgundy that shit. Luckily, our partners at Manscaped TM Oh, hang on, sorry, it's in all caps. Luckily, our partners at Manscaped TM have made it easy to turn your bathroom into your own private dong salon. My neighbours must think I have a mental illness. I'm just screaming Manscaped. Manscaped is on a mission to change the grooming game with their below-the-waist grooming and hygiene products, and they just released in the UK, Canada, and Australia. I think they're in America too, and it, I don't know. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, copy and bullshit aside, this thing's great. I use it whenever I need to use it. It's really good. It doesn't nick you. I had a really good one that was twice the price of this, or I thought it was a good one. Went to a fucking shaver store, did research. I asked the lady, I was like, what am I going to, I want something for my face and my nuts. She goes, this is going to be the best shit ever. And it, and it cut me and I still have PTSD. I can barely use this one properly. I'm so fucking paranoid. It's going to happen again. This one has not that, not done that to me. It's really good. I recommend it. And if uh, you get one, it supports the show. They come back and I can continue doing my fucking yelling, all right? Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, or SPEARS20, 20% off, and free shipping. The other good news I had, right? I'm going to pull it up here because I would love to just just experience the article once more. Um, we're in a pandemic, right? Obviously, online shopping has exploded. And what happens with online shopping? Uh, shipping obviously goes nuts. Uh, now, you would think, like other services that I've been using, you know, I mean, I ship my stuff out with a few different services. I use Sendal. I use uh, Toll sometimes. I use Star Trek. I use uh, a bunch of other ones to get to get my merch to you. Now, one thing that I really fucking hate using that I have almost 100% quarantined my business from, I put up Death Threats Don't Scare Me hoodies on sale. They all sold out in a day. Had to send out heaps of fucking shipping, had to send out like a bunch of Patreon rewards. There was like so much shit. Jazz was posting for days. And at the end of it, when I looked at my pile, I breathed a sigh of relief when I saw that there was only one hoodie that had to be shipped out via Australia Post. And to that brave soul, I apologize because that's going to take six months. But that's not my fault. So don't email me. Yell at Australia Post because they fucking suck, right? And that's why I would like to read this amazing news article. Oh, this isn't the one I wanted to read. I just Googled Australia Post. This is a new one. Kangaroo Joey stuffed into Australia Post letterbox at Wollongulba. Woongulba. Distressed kangaroo found in Australia Post mailbox. People are saying it's animal abuse. I bet it wasn't. I bet the kangaroos saw how, how fucking shit they are at their jobs and they were like, you know what? I'm an animal and even I can do this better. Australia Post sucks. 
this article. Where is it? This one makes me mad. So, as we all know, Australia Post is terrible. You buy something from it. Jazz bought an earring. Uh, Jazz bought a new ear piercing for her ear uh, to replace the old one that broke. It still hasn't arrived, and her piercing has sealed over, and because of coronavirus, she can't get it again. So that's where we're at. I get emails all the time from cunts going, hey, it says it's shipped, and I've got my tracking number, but it hasn't arrived yet. It's been ages. What's going on? And I say, it's Australia Post. Harass them. I, when I buy stuff and it's sent with... I bought a fucking Stream Deck. It took four weeks for it to get from Sydney to Melbourne. Meanwhile, I buy something on Amazon. It's next day. Office works. Next day. Something gets sent via Sendle. It like, takes like three days. What are they doing? It's fucked, right? In the middle of this... In the middle of this, of them doing a terrible job and everyone complaining about it. This, by the way, is not a private business. It's a government-owned business. The, our taxes pay for it. The CEO, right, Mrs. H- Miss Holgate, used the company credit card to purchase $12,000 worth of Cartier watches to give to staff members as a bonus. Hey, you don't get Cartier watches for running the shittest business on earth. The worst fucking business on earth. They're like, great, let's done it. We've done a great job here, fucking up everyone's week and treating our posties like shit. We deserve luxury watches. They couldn't even choose a good luxury watch brand. If I'm a fucking executive, I'm not wearing a Cartier watch. Give me that Rolex, bro. I want that AP. Wait, like that's that to me is the biggest fucking issue. If your CEO is buying you a Cartier watch, they're dumb. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Like, like if I do something incredible and I make a bunch of money and I decide to get my first luxury watch and I spend it on a Cartier, unsubscribe, all right? It's Rolex or nothing, for fuck's sake. That's the biggest red flag to me is that she was like, good job, guys, have a Cartier watch. Who wants that? Miss Holgate was asked to step down from her role. She got fired for it. That is awesome. And then the former CEO told the hearing he would not have allowed it to happen if he was chairman at the time. If I had been chair in 2018 and had, and had been made aware of the proposal to purchase Cartier watches, I would have vetoed that purchase. While highly appreciative of the excellent work of the staff concerned, I acknowledge the purchase of the watches may not have met with the expectations of members of the public or my own expectations. Yeah, that's fucking insane. It's like it's a government business. You don't fucking get watches. That's crazy. $7.5 billion government enterprise. Okay, maybe, maybe, well, you know, maybe they get a Rolex. Oh, they did it two years ago and they pulled it out of the bag now. I love that. In a statement, Miss Holgate said she accepted that Cartier watches did not pass the pub test. What the fuck is the pub test? How do you pass the pub? What is a pub test? What, are they getting pissed as well? Pass the pub test. Her annual base salary was $1.5 million, but generally earned substantially more with bonuses and got a $700,000 Termination payment. That's fucking awesome. That's sweet, isn't it? Meanwhile, they're doing the worst job of ever, ever, and posties are fucking slaving to death in the sun. What is pass the pub test? What does that mean? Pass the pub test. Pub test. Australian term often used by the media. Yeah, so that's why no one uses it. They're pretending that it's, oh, you know, it's a saying. To describe the collective opinion of the everyday Australians to the conduct and reputation of public figures. Oh, that's a sick saying. So if you said, oh, he fucking ScoMo shit himself at Engadine Maccas at the pub, people would go, ha, oh, what a dickhead. 
Ugh. That is so fucking Australian. That our moral compass is drunk cunts in a pub. And that's how you run a country. Let's be real. We're killing it. Zero cases. Because every policy needs to be run by six drunk blokes who are half watching the footy. They're 100% pissed and 50% watching the footy, 50% considering the issue. That's great. That's how our country should be run. I love that. Guys, it's, how long have we been going here for? Oh, 40 minutes. It's the perfect time for miscellaneous bit at the end. If you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end is the uh, worst part of the podcast. It, it is the part where I answer questions sent in by the listeners. If you need some life advice, if you have, if you have a story to tell me, send it through to podcast at loosespears.com. Uh, sponsored by Patreon. Join the Discord by joining the Patreon. Uh, and you will also get an extra episode of the podcast that only comes out to the fucking Patreon supporters. Secret episode. Supplement Sundays. Anyway, here we go. Extremely petty vandalism. Hey, Lewis, I thought you would appreciate this one. This guy who sent me emails, by the way, uh, often sends me emails of vandalism. So this guy is a fucking criminal. He's been doing it for years, and I love it. Uh, please don't get caught. Hey, Lewis, I thought you would appreciate this one. As we've been in lockdown in Melbourne, uh, a lot of parks have erected spoonvilles. And it's like a bunch of wooden spoons with faces drawn on them, like a community thing. Fuck, I hate community things that are just litter. Like, that's not, that doesn't bring the community together. That chokes the wildlife. Can we stop doing that, please? Like, oh, look at, look how amazing these, fo this, it's Spoonville. Great. A goose just choked on it. A goose looks like a fucking spoon because he's got it jammed down his neck. Can we please stop littering and pretending that it's community? For fuck's sake. I hate that shit. Anyway, he's, he's attached a picture and it's a bunch of spoons. So he, so he goes, all right, uh, a, a lot of parks have erected spoonvilles, picture attached. A great gag is to when you're out with the boys, just take a spoon as you pass to come with you for the night. Have <laughs> a shit one. That is good. Take a spoon and pr please end that one in with by putting it in the fucking bin. <laughs> hey, Lewis, this is another one. Diet tips. Uh, and mates won't let me quit drinking. Hi, Lewis. My name is Pat. I've been watching your stuff since 2015, and I saw you in Port Macquarie. Legend, mate. Thank you. Uh, also, I've shown so many people your comedy special, uh, and I've also gotten them onto your stuff as well. Dude, that's awesome. I love people who fucking share my shit and get their mates onto it. That's amazing. That's how we grow here. If you enjoy what I do, share some shit. I've got a podcast clips channel, Lewis Spears podcast clips. If there's a funny clip from the podcast you want to show a mate, jump on that channel, link it to them. Say it's Spear Sundays. Let's grow this shit. That's awesome. Thank you, Pat. Anyway, I'm 22 and I've been drinking since I was about 17. Uh, and I've reached the point where I want to go on a diet or something. I only weigh 84 kilogram, so I'm not overweight but I'm starting to have a shit rig like Luke. Uh, I cut out alcohol for this reason and I went to my friend's house on the weekend and when I told him I didn't want to drink, it was like I told him I fucked his dad. He cacked the shits because I didn't want to get drunk with him and his mates and because you can't see my shit rig, they don't believe me that I want to be healthy. How do I get them to stop trying to peer pressure me into getting drunk with them? Uh, and do you have any suggestions for diets or fitness tips have a shit one okay so fitness is pretty easy i used to be a personal trainer it's not that hard especially you know you're 84 kilos you're a young dude you got a good base to work with that's that's how you should look at it i think if you're when you're skinny it's hard and when you're really fat it's hard but when you're like a little bit overweight what you have is a great base you probably got a lot of muscle under that uh and because you're a little bit heavy um because you carry around that weight but uh, you're, you don't have so much fat that, it, that you're not going to – you're going to see results like instantly from doing this shit. Uh, Google a program called Starting Strength. Uh, if, you're, if, you, if you have the ability to go to a gym and it's safe, Google a program called Starting Strength. Do that and then add in like one day of cardio, whether it's running, swimming, riding your bike, uh, whatever. Walking every day in the morning helps heaps, it, like more than you think. And then you basically just want to uh, – uh, cut out sugar, 
You've already cut out alcohol. That's a huge thing. And just cut out sugar. You don't have to remove sugar from your life, but just stop eating shit that has sugar in it that isn't a treat. Do you know what I mean? Like if you want to have ice cream, sure, go for it. Don't go overboard, but have it as a treat. But don't be fucking eating like cereal that has sugar in it or fucking... uh, canned food that has heaps of sugar in it or lunch that has heaps of sugar in the sauce. Like like so much stuff has a lot of sugar in it. If you can avoid it, you don't have to cut it out completely, but if you can avoid it, you will lose weight like that. Cut out Coke, cut out soft drink, none of that shit, um, and just have a treat and make it special. Don't be eating it all day and you'll be sweet. Uh, Starting Strength is a great program to put on a bunch of muscle quite fast and it teaches you all of the compound lifts and then progress from there. Um, That's my advice to you. Uh, Fitness wise, uh, alcohol wise, so I don't drink, but I have never drunk. So I've never had to do what you're doing, which is drinking with the mates and then putting the brakes on. So it's a little bit different. I don't have experience with that, but... A lot of the time, I I've come to realize. So so I didn't drink, and then I and I kind of suffered socially for it. I got pushed out of parties, and people didn't want me around, and 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 it and it came from insecurity on their point part. They thought because I didn't drink, I would judge them for drinking, and they were insecure about it because a lot of them. A lot of look, a lot of people know that they shouldn't drink as much as they do. Drinking is bad for you. Uh, and uh, especially in Australia, we've got a real big binge drinking culture, especially in like, you know, smaller towns, which you are from. You're not from like a tiny town, but it is smaller. It is a big issue and it is bad. And a lot of people do know that. OK, I think that's fair to say you can enjoy it in moderation, but I think uh, most of us don't. Right. Um, so a lot of people do know that it is bad. Uh, and a lot of people, when they make a positive change for themselves, People feel insecure in themselves when they see you doing it if they're not doing it also. Uh, and I, it sounds like that's what you're coming up against is if, because really, if you think about it, if you not drinking can ruin someone else's night, that is them. That's not you. You're not doing anything. It, it doesn't sound like you were going, and you should also be sober. It sounds like you just want to hang out and not drink. So the only thing that I can tell you is, it comes with consistency on your part. If you really don't want to drink, it's not you might have one or two. It's not you know, you'll drink every two weeks. It's not you'll drink once a month. It's you don't drink at all. Because the minute you start caving to peer pressure is the minute people start going, ah, oh, we can get him around. We can convince him this, that. He'll come around. We'll, we'll show him how fun it is. And then he'll have a drink. And then he'll have 10. You know, if you really don't want to drink and you really want your friends to support you on that, you need to stop completely. Don't judge them. Don't be a dick about it. But just tell them seriously, preferably uh, outside of a party environment, because if they've already had a few and you're talking to them about it, it's fucked. What you want to do is like in the middle of the day on a Wednesday, when there's no alcohol in sight, hopefully, (laughs) you want to go, hey, man, so I don't care what you do. Uh, but I've decided to stop drinking. I don't enjoy it. I don't think it's good for me and I'm trying to lose weight and become healthier. I I love you and I love hanging out with you and it's fine if you drink, but for me, I'm going to stop and I would appreciate it if you didn't try to get me to drink because it's hard for me Uh, and you doing that makes it a lot harder. So as a friend, can you just not, you don't have to not drink it around me, but can you just not offer it to me? That would be great. Uh, and to be honest, if they can't do that for you, they're not your friends. You know, if, if you want to better yourself and they want to prevent you from doing that, they're not your friends. You know, at the end of the day, they don't want what's best for you. So that's not your mate. Uh, that's how I view it. Uh, and that's what, that's what really helped me was it's consistency. Because, you know, from your friend's perspective, if you don't drink, but then, you know, oh, all right, I'll have one then you do drink. You just need a bit of convincing. So you need to be consistent as well. You don't have to be a dick. Just every time they offer, just say, no, thank you. What also helps is have something else in your hand. Have a Coke, have a fucking lemon lime bitters, have a ginger beer, have something in your hand so that they don't, so they can't offer it to you. You, Because you do look a little bit weird if you're just standing there with no drink. I always have something. 
it's never alcoholic. Uh, and that helps. And then eventually, you know, really it'll take three months of you going to parties, going to events, and them offering you, and you saying no every single time. Eventually, they don't even offer. That's what happened with me. And that still happens to me to this day. Like when I meet a new person or when I hang out with new people who don't know that I'm sober, they'll offer me a drink and I'll say no and I'll get something else. And then I'll see them again and they'll offer me a drink and then I'll go, no, I don't drink. And then it just happens. They're doing it because it's normal for them. They're not trying to get you to drink a lot of the time. And then they just go, oh, Lewis doesn't drink. And then and then now I'm at parties and they go, Lewis, do you want a Coke? Do you want a water? Do you want a ginger beer? Like it's normal. So you just need to stay consistent. And just have a, and if it, you know, if they keep offering, just have a serious talk and say, hey man, you know, no disrespect to you, but I really need you to stop offering me shit because I really don't want to do it. Uh, and, uh, but I still want to be your friend. And I still want to hang out with you. And look, to be honest, if, you know, if they can't have fun with you while you're sober and if they don't want you to improve yourself, they are not your friends uh, and you're better off without them. All right. That's where I'm going to end it. Thank you. Fuck you. Uh, support me on Patreon. Uh, Alpha Energy merch drop that goes live. Uh, I'm aiming for Monday, uh, but I'll send an email out and there will be a discount code posted in the Patreon. There's also going to be the bonus Spearhead Sundays coming out uh, after this one as well. And uh, yeah, it's on my website, loosespears.com. We have Afterpay enabled as well. We finally got that sorted. Afterpay's up and running if you want to split it up in payments and all that kind of shit. All right, see you later. Goodbye. I'll talk to you next Sunday. I'll see you on stream. Buy a t-shirt. Get some alpha energy on your chest. And no, I'm not talking about my cum. Have a shit one.